Since 2000, the PAR for the Cure has helped raise awareness and fund brain tumor research through contributions to the Jimmy Fund. Through its PAR for the Cure Golf Classic and Golf Ball Gala, we honor the lives of those who have succumbed to their brain tumors and offer hope to those who still fight. So who benefits from the money raised at these events? They are athletes, librarians, mothers, husbands, and friends. They are brain tumor survivors. So here it's good. I can hear like what everybody's saying and how they're feeling. You know, listening to the stories, that's what this support group is about, to hear different ways that people experience this. <laughs> Through laughter and tears, these men and women share their journey twice a month at a Dana-Farber brain tumor support group. It's a journey that is both physically and emotionally grueling, starting with the first signs of trouble. I was going numb on one side, and somebody said to me that I possibly was having a, a stroke. Yeah. These headaches proceeded to occur. I nearly passed out on a job site at work. Um, and uh, a couple times I thought the top of my head was going to blow off. All of a sudden you started hearing helicopter noises. So I'm like, oh shit, because I speak like that every once in a while. Um, I'm like, it's having a stroke. My whole right side went numb and I started to tremble. My hand started to tremble and I put it up. Back then I had a lot of blonde hair. I put it up in my hair so um, she wouldn't see it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, I'm going to have to have my daughter call 911. I had, I guess, what were probably some um, ocular motor seizures. My eyes were flicking back and forth a little bit, and I didn't really know what that meant. I just thought I was staring at my computer for too long. They all remember the day of the diagnosis. It was a day that would change their lives and the lives of their loved ones forever. When I started uh, eight games that year, and we <laughs> won a lot of games, and it was a lot of fun. But um, after the season ended, I went back to check up um, on this tumor, this little benign thing, and when we looked at it, um, it had grown just incredibly fast. And when I came up from the MRI, she said, I have to admit you to the hospital straight away, and I said, why? And she said, you have a mass on your brain. I pulled up the scan, and I was looking at it over his shoulder, and I said, what's that? I could see it. I could see the tumor. Same as Wendy looking over my doctor's shoulder, I could see this thing in the back of my head, but I, I just didn't know what it was. It was nothing like the little tiny ball that was there before. What was it like to talk with your doctor? What did you initially think? I was all by myself at the neurologist's office, and um, I cried on his shoulder, and he, you know, held me, and it was very scary. I was uh, almost to the point of a little being out of it, not not realizing that in some ways this is all happening. You know, the the, the impacts down down the road. My first thing to the nurse was, "Am I going to die?" Early twenties is a tough time to face something this big and uh, try and finish up college and get on with uh, a lot of things I wanted to do with my life. The treatments and symptoms vary, and so do the results. Because she was an archivist over in Cambridge at the Longfellow House, I was talking was what she did for a living. It's very hard for her to find words. We joke that a lot of sentences end with, oh crap, you know, because she's <laughs> going along and there's, the word isn't there. The tumor was uh, a size of a grapefruit pushing on, was it your, um, oh, the brain, his the brain, brain stem, stem. <clears throat> excuse me, his brain stem, and if he was moved the wrong way, you know, he would have died. If I didn't have diarrhea, I was constipated. Um, I had no appetite, and it was just, it was really um, exhausting. We have uh, high hopes for Avastin. Who's done what we've heard and and read on it, and um, it certainly was uh, was easy to take. Fortunately, we didn't. We haven't experienced a lot of side effects, so you know, thank God for that. Other than the hair loss, but the friend's place has great 
uh, air pieces, air, air good wigs. In this room, there's an understanding, shared experience, a sense of safety. For brain tumor patients and their loved ones, it's also a place to vent. He didn't want to realize that this was real and I was sick. And he's still scared. I mean, there are times when he, you know, kind of shies away from me and he's like, I'm preparing myself. Like, I'm not gone yet. A friend of mine says to me, I remember in the beginning, and it used to just irritate me so much, I would just get so mad up here. Like, she would pat me on the back and say, you'll be fine. It's like, yeah. I just don't like people saying that to right. me. You'll be fine. Right. How do you know you can see into the future? Right. And that prompts the group facilitator to take out the stupid book, appropriately named the worst things people can say to a cancer patient. You don't look sick. Uh, you don't look like you have cancer. You don't look so good today. I didn't think it was possible to live with part of your brain missing. <laughs> they are fighters and survivors. They are part of a fraternity they never wanted to join. Yet together, they courageously take on cancer and all that comes with it. Uh, I told my kids, I said, you know, when I'm sleeping, I'm working hard. My body's working to fight this. And you guys want to win a soccer game? I want to win this battle. Making the decision to be who you want to be in this world and then getting tossed into something like this, um, figuring those out at the same time can be really hard. And I, uh, I don't think that there's anything about this that I would change. This has definitely changed all of our lives. But the, it's part of the blessed and, you know, the fact that people, people who don't know us are going out of their way uh, to start a legacy, I mean, for your friend Lenny. I just want to thank everyone that goes to the golf ball and the golf outings and donate as much as they possibly can. Um, we need more research, we really do. Um, and we need funding for that research. So thank you all very, very much.